Light up the world with a little more truth. I got a couple more words. What is up guys, this is Nisho here, and today I got you guys a real silly deck profile. Um, it's not, I, like, when making this deck, I didn't know whether I was making Battling Boxers slightly better or slightly worse. Um, because, let me give, you, give me, let me give you guys a little history about Battling Boxers. So Battling Boxers came out in the same set that Dragon Rulers originally came out in, and uh, Dragon Rulers were like the meta at the time so everybody so if you weren't playing dragon wars themselves you were playing dragon wars in some type of deck so there's lots of decks that had dragon wars mermails mixed with dragon rulers dragundis mecha phantom beast uh like the list just goes on and on like the earth one was amazing in heroics so there's definitely a lot of versatility in the dragon rulers and uh, when we first saw the True Kings, we thought of True Kings as like the pseudo Dragon Rulers, as like another version of them for like worm type monsters. And although they aren't as good as Dragon Rulers are, um, they do still have that whole you can use it in certain decks type of thing where you know you can use the Fire One and Fire decks or Earth One and Earth decks. Um, examples Dinos, the Water and Water decks. You could play the Water One and Mermails, but it's not that beneficial. And, uh, the win one that just came out in Maximum Crisis, which uh, we haven't seen a lot of play of yet, but you could use it in a win deck if you wanted to. So, Battling Boxers, uh, when their most notable period was when they had Blaster, because Blaster could drop um, either your Counter Blow or Counter Punch, is what it's called, um, and itself to pop a card, and then you would have a Counter Punch in the graveyard. To increase attack, or you could drop um, itself and like another battling level four battling boxer to pop a card, and then you can roam summon out switch hitter, special summon that battling boxer, and then overlay into lead yoke, or just attack directly and then overlay into lead yoke. So that was one period, and then after that, um, we got uh, battling boxers kind of died out after all the dragon wars got banned, but then we got a uh, shadow and number 79. And uh, from that point, um, people kind of started this whole like uh, reptile pseudo build where we were playing Kadago Kage and Mass Chameleon, um, and we're also playing King of the Feral Limps to uh, increase uh, consistency in the deck. Uh, so in case you can get Lead Yoke first turn, you can go Lava Chain and um, King of the Feral Limps. So you drop a monster and then search. Um, Reptiles at the same time, so you'd always have like an, an overlay to go into because battling boxers rely heavily on their normal summon because of uh, cards like switch hitter and headgear, which are the two ones you kind of want to see like first turn. So, because they rely so much on normal summons, cards like Kage Okage and Mask Chameleon worked well. But after Lava Chain got banned, um, that kind of changed quickly as people just stopped playing the deck, period. Um, I'm sure there's a few um, people who still play the deck like casually, but it's it's never been anything serious. It's always been a fun deck, and uh, it's it's been a deck that I've seen quite a lot at locals that I've gone to, but I've never seen in a competitive scene. So yeah, that rhymed. But um, yeah. So with the release of True Dracos or True Kings, not True Dracos. Um, I saw, you know, since they're kind of like Dragon Wars, I thought, you know, maybe let's just try it with Battle Boxers again. So, uh, we start off with our True King, um, I'm not gonna pr pronounce his name, he's the Fire True King, and what he does is, when he's in your hand, you pop two other monsters on your hand or side of the field, including a Fire Monster, so it has to be at least one Fire Monster, and, uh, you special summon this card from your hand, and then after that, you get to banish an opponent's monster, if you use two Fire Monsters to summon him. And uh, if he's destroyed by a card effect, um, you can special you can add one non-fire worm type monster from graveyard to your hand, which is why we played an earth one. Uh, yeah, so he's kind of does the same thing. He triggers a uh, glass jaw, which is something that you like, but um, he's just here because y you can use him. Like he's not the biggest uh, reason why you play the deck. Uh, honestly, this deck has no back row removal. Which is why uh, you kind of you're kind of gonna need Tornado Dragon. This deck is real expensive, but it's not really worth <coughs> playing that much. It's more of a troll deck. Um, I would really stick to Yu-Gi-Oh Pro if you're gonna play this deck, but you can play it in real life if you want. If you just have all the True King cards, 
and uh, have a battling boxer core, which costs three, four dollars, then you can play the second in real life. But uh, yeah, um, he's kind of uh, the guy you want to see. Um, not first turn, but at least have like one of him out. So then we have the Earth one, which is the best true king so far. Um, so if this card's in your hand, you destroy two other monsters that are Earth, or including an Earth monster, but summon it. And if you and if both were Earth, then you get to banish three cards from your opponent's extra deck, but they all have to have different names. So it's definitely a good card. It it uh, snipes out like cards like Norton. And like uh, problem cards, like there may be problem cards for you, like maybe Utopia Lightning, so you banish their regular Utopia, so they don't have access to Lightning, or you can banish like um, if you're facing um, Water, you could banish like their Norden and Rare Fish, so that they won't have any instant fusion plays. Um, so there's definitely a, a lot of ways that this that this card can break down a deck, but. Um, that's only if you pop two Earth, which unfortunately, this deck being mostly fire, it's not going to happen too often. It's that's why this is something more you stick to, like Earth decks with. So uh, the reason why you play it though is because if you pop this card, um, so when it's destroyed by card effect, you special you special summon one non Earth Worm type monster from your graveyard, and uh, you can only use each effect of the True Kings once per turn. So that's the same thing applies to the, the fire one. So, um, when he's popped, um, you can just special summon one of the, uh, fire ones from the graveyard, if you already have a fire one, and then just go into the Exceed, which is one of the best, re <laughs> one of the best Exceeds I've seen in a long time. So, we play the Kaijus because, uh, Gamsiel, uh, you can bump, uh, a Lead Yoke into Gamsiel, and Lead Yoke would just gain 800 and not be destroyed, and Gamsiel would leave. And uh, Sticky String Kaiju, um, you could do the uh, number 79 and attack over him. But uh, usually these guys are just here to get rid of problem monsters. Uh, you see uh, the two interrupted Kaiju Slumbers at the bottom here. It's, it's just a small Kaiju engine. You could play more, you don't. You could just not play them at all. But, you know, in this format, Kaijus are kind of amazing. I mean, Kaijus have been amazing since they've been released. So, um, it's definitely something that I think is worth playing. Um, especially since a lot of decks focus on mo uh, on monsters and cards like uh, Masterpiece are uh, roaming around, so y y you just want to be careful about that. So we play Triple Glassjaw. So when he's targeted for it, so he's a level four normal with 2,000 attack zero defense, which is why you played uh, Mask Chameleon, because he has zero, uh, zero defense. And um, when he's targeted for an attack, you, you just destroy him. So he destroys it himself. But when he's destroyed and sent to a graveyard by a card effect, you can target one battling boxer monster in your graveyard, except Glassjaw, and add it to your hand. Um, he's kind of like the battling boxers that uh, that like the whole deck abuses because he's pretty much a uh, part of the engine uh, in the deck because he keeps uh, your resources going, which is why this deck appealed to a lot of a casual fan base because it kind of had like its own like renewable resources inside the archetype. And that's that's always something that people look for. So Glass Shell was definitely um, one of the better cards in the archetype and always interesting. So that's why you play three of this boy, and uh, he's he's pretty good. So uh, double battling boxer shadow. So if you don't want, don't know what he does during your main phase, you detach uh, material from a battling boxer exceed monster you control, and then special summon him from your hand. So you only use this effect once per turn. So you if you overlay two battling boxers into um, lead yoke or into number 79, um, more, more likely this would be better with number 79, but with lead yoke it does work, it is beneficial with lead yoke too. Um, if you have a glass jaw attached, you can detach a glass jaw and special summon them, and then glass jaw would get his effect, but if you don't have glass jaw, uh, you should just use number 79 if you're going to use, uh, shadow. So, um, since number 79, he can attach, uh, once per turn he can attach a battling boxer from your hand or grave. Uh, to himself, and he gets 100 attack for each. So if you use Shadow's effect on number 79, you wouldn't be losing anything, which is why uh, it, it works so well. Uh, so Shadow's just a, a, a bit of speed in deck. He's one of the cards that you don't need to normal summon at all, and uh, that's it's kind of what battling boxers needed at the time, but it's nothing too relevant. So double switch hitter, we would play him at three if he didn't have this one condition. 
So, when he's normal summoned, you can target one battling boxer or monster in the graveyard to special summon that target. Any battling boxer or monster in the graveyard, even if it's one of the exceeds, you can just special summon it for free, any position you want. Sounds good? Yeah, it is pretty good. The only problem is, you cannot special summon any monsters during the turn you activate this, activate this effect except battling boxer monsters. Which is why we only play about two in this deck because we play kaijus, we play true kings. Um, there's a lot going on in this deck and we don't want to limit, uh, limit ourselves to battling boxes only for a turn because that may hinder us. So, switch hitter, uh, I don't really feel safe playing him at three. And um, I remember one time I tried to make a fire king um, battling boxers with the same uh, idealism in mind. But the thing is, is that um, the big the big bird fire king that pops all monsters on the field, I forgot his name, um, he special summons himself during the standby phase. So if he special summons himself during the standby phase, then you go main phase one, you know what I'm talking about switch hitter. Switch hitter's effect cannot activate at all. Like it's, it's not even optional at all. Um, and that, that really sucks for switch hitter. Um, I honestly don't think he should have he should have that condition, but it does kind of limit the deck. Like it cripples a deck that's already like not too good. So it's uh, one of those things I just see. It's just like oh man, like why why does it have to have that? Like is, this deck would be so much better if it didn't have that one effect. But unfortunately, um, that's how the co the cookie crumbles. So we play triple sparer. And uh, his effect is, if you control battling boxer monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if you do, you cannot conduct your battle phase for the rest of it of this turn. So uh, he also has a bad condition where you can't use your battle phase. But um, his uh, the upside to it is that it says for the rest of the turn. So you can so you can still attack and everything, and then just special summon them during main phase two. Or, you know, uh, during first turn, if you have just one normal summon and you have a spar in your hand, just special summon that spar overlay. Which is why I kind of like spar better than switch hitter. Because, you know, spar has that whole for the rest of the turn thing. If switch hitter had the whole for the rest of the turn, like where you can't special summon monsters except battling boxers for the rest of the turn, that would have been a million times better. But um, his effect says just in, in general. So since spar says for the rest of the turn, uh, he is a lot more acceptable, and he's a lot. He, he makes the deck a lot more consistent. Although uh, I, I do fear there is going to be a time where you're going to need to you're going to have no other option to summon out Spar, but you're going to need your battle phase as well. So it's definitely sad to see uh, cards like this be so weird. Uh, so triple battling boxer headgeared. Um, he's definitely. Uh, one of the better ones in the deck. So when this card is normal summoned, you can send one battling boxer from your deck to your graveyard. Uh, just free of cost. It's just normal summon. Uh, you're most likely going to mill a glass jaw, but if you don't have glass jaw yet, you can mill a spar or a shadow. And then um, the second you get a second one, you can mill a glass jaw. Or, you know, you can mill a switch hitter too. That, that, that's what I would do. Like, whenever I don't have um, switch hitter in my hand yet, I would always just mill a switch hitter. And then the second I, I got a Glass Shell's effect to activate, because this deck can get Glass Shell's effect to activate real often, um, you add back your Switch Hitter, Switch Hitter, Summon out Glass Shell, Glass Shell into Lead Yoke. So it's definitely good. And uh, he does protect himself, he does wear protection, his uh, his headgear. Uh, once per turn, this face up attack tradition card cannot be destroyed by battle. So if your opponent only has one monster to beat over this guy with, he won't be destroyed by by that battle. So it's definitely useful for if you need to keep a battling boxer on the field for next turn. Uh, this is the guy you want to go for. Which is why he's so good first turn. Because most times your opponent may only summon one or two monsters first turn. And uh, having a monster that can protect itself is definitely useful. It does save you uh, from damage as well. So yeah. So this one we have one battling boxer counter punch. Sadly he is not a level 4. Which he would be a way better if he was, but um, he gets a pass because of his effect. So during e during the damage step of either player's turn, when a battling monster, battling boxer monster control is attacking or is being attacked, you banish this card from your graveyard or hand, and that monster gains a thousand attack until the end phase. But you can only use this effect with return. So uh, any battling boxer monster, you banish him from the hand or graveyard. Unfortunately, it's not discard like Kalu, because then that would be a lot more like. 
discard from hand or banish from graveyard. That would be a lot more versatile, because then you can use this effect twice, you know, off of one card, rather than it only being once per card. But, you know, the fact he does still have a graveyard effect does make him useful. Uh, you could mill him with headgeared as well if, if you're trying to go for game. You don't have to attack a monster. You don't have to battle a monster uh, to use his effect. You just use it on any battling boxer that is currently in battle. So it's definitely useful. Um, and, this was, and this was a guy like when Blaster was around, the, the, the uh, Dragon Ruler. Um, you could drop him and a Blaster. And you wouldn't really lose anything. Which is why Battling Boxers at one point played like a Phoenix Wind, Wind Blast. Because you could drop him. You, like you could drop your Counter Punch. And you know. You, it, it, it would pretty much just be like a free cost for um, Phoenix Wind. Because you wouldn't mind dropping a Counter Punch. Because it's effect could activate in hand or graveyard. And lastly we have uh, Maxi uh, for the last monster. You know it's Maxi. It's not really anything special. So Triple Instant Fusion. And if you look at the bottom here, I'm playing double Theseus and a Norton. Uh, Theseus is nice for making level 9 synchros because, you know, you have a lot of level 4s here. So we do play Vermilion Mech and uh, Cloud Castle. And the reason you play Cloud Castle is just so you can go into your uh, True King VFD faster. So if you have a True King in your graveyard and then you have an Instant Fusion and a level 4 in your hand, you just go normal summon that level 4, maybe it's a headgear, do you mill something? Instant Fusion into Theseus, um, Synchro for level 9, the Cloud Castle brings back that True King monster you can overlay into uh, True King of All Calamities or True King BFD, whichever you want to call it. Um, and you know Norton is just Norton. It's just generic rank 4, spam guy. Spam guy. So Rhoda, uh, these guys are all warriors, so it definitely helps. So Battling Boxer Spirits, which is kind of what encouraged a Light Sword variant of this deck that never um, never got off the ground, but uh, it was something that uh, people tried. So uh, you send the top card of your deck to the graveyard, target with battling, bo uh, battling boxer monster in your graveyard, special summon that target in face of defense position. So um, this is, so if you have head geared first turn, um, you get a free exceed if you do have a spirits in your hand as well. Unfortunately, spirits is not searchable, unlike all the other battling boxer monsters, but um, it definitely is helpful um, so, which is why you want to play three of it. You kind of want to see your battling box and boxers as quick as possible. So, yeah. So, one soul charge. I mean, this deck isn't really that strong. So, being able to just bring back a whole bunch of monsters at once would definitely be helpful. Since a lot of these cards in this deck are protect themselves. So, it's definitely helpful. So, triple terraforming. As you can see, we got ourselves triple of this expensive card right here. And, uh, double Kaiju Slumber. Because, um... Kaijus are cool, um, if you, so, you can either pop this with Diagram and then search a Kaiju next turn, if you're going first, or if you're going second, you can just use it straight off the bat, like, it's kind of like a dark hole, you just use it straight off the bat, they get a Gamseo, you get a Sticky String Guy, and then, uh, you can go into your place, you don't have to worry about your opponent's big monsters, you, you just dark hold the field, basically. So that's why it's at two. That's why it's so good. So triple Dragonic Diagram. Um, as I said, um, it's here uh, to search uh, these big guys. And um, it also helps because you could pop any card. It's not just monsters and it's in your hand or your field. So you can pop your Slumber, search a Kaiju. You can pop Glass, uh, glass Jaw and bring back a... A, uh, a battling boxer or you can pop your uh, Lila Sagam and then special summon if you have one of your um, vanishers in the graveyard um, then you can special summon him from the grave and then search the, 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 the second one so you just special summon that second one from your hand by using its actual effect so it's definitely useful and if you pop one in, which is kind of why it's kind of like a loop because if you pop one of these guys with uh, with um, Dragon Diagram, then you get to, you get to get back your uh, Ligo Sagam or your True King VFD, like just in case. So uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely useful, and uh, while it's on the field, all your True Kings will gain 300 attack, so there'll be 32 on the Fire one, and 28 on the Earth one. I don't think you're going to summon the Earth one, you just might in case you have a uh, Sticky String Kaiju and... A battling boxer like the glass jaw in hand then you might use it but 
Most times you won't. And uh, lastly, for traps, we just have two Solemn Strike. There's no more space for traps in this deck. You can probably go over 40. It's, it's battling boxers. It's, it's not going to hurt. But, you know, I, I just want to keep it 40. Just keep it, um, keep it uh, tight. So uh, I already discussed the fusions and the synchros. Uh, True King VFD. And uh, if you don't know what he does, he's pretty much one of the most broken exceeds ever. Uh, once per turn, you need to play turn. Detach exceed material from this card. Declare what a tribute. For the rest of the turn, face on monsters on the field, become the declared tribute. So uh, in case you get your uh, Earth one back and then you call Earth, all your monsters will become Earth monsters and all your opponent's monsters will become Earth monsters as well. And uh, monsters your opponent controls with the declared tribute cannot activate their effects. So since they all become Earth type, they, they're all uh, susceptible to this effect. So unless there's one of them that's unaffected by your opponent's monster effects, um, it's pretty much going to go through. So, um, yeah, uh, his second effect is that if you would destroy monsters um, with the effect of true Draco or true King monsters in your hand, you can also destroy monsters your opponent controls. Unfortunately, this doesn't apply to the field spell because it is a draconic diagram. It doesn't have true Draco in the name, which it would be way too broken if you could do that. But it does allow you to pop your opponent's monsters for the summoning of a true king monster. But I feel that's kind of balanced because uh, if they solemn strike or they solemn mourning the true king monster, then your monster, then the monsters don't get destroyed at all because uh, the monsters are destroyed during the resolution of the effect. So since these effects start a chain, since they're not like summoning conditions, they're effects to summon. It's it's weird how Konami does these things. It's it's pretty funny. That, uh, they made a little loophole, but um, it's definitely, uh, I definitely think it was for the better this time. So, Utopia Lightning and Utopia Generic Rank Forest. So, number 79, talk about, talked about him a bit earlier. Uh, you can attach a Bounding Boxer uh, from your hand or graveyard to this card as Exceed Material once per turn. And then, uh, this card gains 100 attack for each uh, Exceed Material attached to it. So... Um, if you stack him up with Exceed Materials, he'll gain 100 for each. He has a base attack of 23, so just by using two level force to summon him, he'll have 25, and maybe one from Grave, he'll have 26. And uh, his effect, which would have been better if if it was one, it was destroyed by anything. If, if that was this card's effect, I mean, Konami just gave like just shot like shot this deck so low sometimes, like they, like they just crippled it too much for it to be good. Because if this effect was when it was destroyed by any card effect, then it would be amazing. So, uh, when this card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card, by a battle or by card effect, and sent to your graveyard. Now notice, it has to be sent to the graveyard too, so you know, um, Dark Law on the field just makes this card useless. You can target level 4 or lower battling boxer monsters in your graveyard up to the number of same shows this card had on the field, and then special summon those targets. So, if he has 3, as as I t as I said earlier, you, you can pretty much just special summon all of his exceed materials from the grave, but um, he can't bring himself back because the monsters you summon have to be level four and lower. But you know, um, other than that, I mean, you, you still get like two three monsters on the field, maybe even four, just for him being destroyed by your opponent's card. It's definitely useful, um, and has its own like. Uh, like backup plan in case it gets destroyed. So I don't think your opponent will destroy this one unless they feel like they can go for game. So um, just be wary of that. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's decent. He's not all that uh, great, but he's not bad either. So you just play him at one. So we play two Lady Oak. Or like no, normal pure battling boxes would play three, but uh, this deck is focused a bit more around uh, generic rank fours. So, you know, we play two... I mean, I, I don't even think you, you go to all three in a duel, but in case you need a third one, Glassjaw can bring back Lady Oak from the graveyard. So in case you can summon the third one, just you can just re recycle the second one instead of having to play a third one. Save you extra deck space. Anyway, so two level four battling boxer monsters, and if a battling boxer monster you control would be destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can detach one extreme material from this card instead of destroying one of those monsters. So, the reason why this card is so broken... Oh yeah, and when an Exceed Material is detached from this card, this card gains 800 attack. So, the reason why this card was the pinnacle of Battling Boxers, and it's kind of like the card you always wanted to go for. You always want to have this guy in the field. Um, I remember a lot of people hated this card when it first came out. It was like, oh, this card is so stupid. 
Yeah. Well, you know, eventually we found loopholes. You know, there's it's only activates when when a battle box would be destroyed. So there's kaiju's. There's um, compulsory evacuation device. Um, tons of cards to just send back to the hand. You know. Which would have been, if, if we had Strike back then, I think Battling Boxers would have been a stronger deck, but um, we didn't have Strike back then, so there's a lot of monsters that just, oh, send you back to the hand, and then Battling, we had Exceed Block, but um, Exceed Block isn't really, I don't know, like, not everybody liked to play it. Anyway, so, um, the reason why he works so well with Glassjaw is because um, his effect um, is not a cost, it is in is an effect. So the effect to detach uh, triggers Glassjaw. And uh, Glassjaw could get a monster back. So it would kind of loop itself if if your opponent only destroyed um, Lead Yolk. So if you had a switch hitter and a Glassjaw attached to it, you would uh, detach the switch hitter first. And then when the Glassjaw got detached, you would bring back the switch hitter. And then next turn, normal summon out switch hitter, special mount Glassjaw again. And then overlay again. So it would definitely be amazing. Um, that you can do that so so often, but uh, again, you know this this card does have a lot of flaws. But the thing is, is that when it would get destroyed, it would gain attack. You know, which is which I said was kind of ironic. Uh, there was another card I was talking about in a previous deck profile where it was it would lose attack in, instead of being destroyed, and then this card would gain attack instead of being destroyed. What was the last deck profile I did? It was uh. Yeah, so it was in the Shark uh, Dino Rabbit deck profile. Yeah, it was the Shark uh, Shark Dino Rabbit deck profile where I was talking about uh, Crystal Zero Lancer and how it could detach to save itself from destruction, but because it gained 500 for every extreme material it had, it would detach and it would lose attack. Which is uh, funny because Battling Box to Lead Yoke, when he would detach, he would gain attack. So. By detaching both, he would be a 3,800 hitter um, on the field, which is definitely a fair trade. So, and then, you know, if you did the whole glass on switch hitter thing, you would have access into another one, which would have 22 after it was summoned. And then you could protect the 3,800 one because Lead Yoke protects any battling boxer monster from being destroyed. So it definitely had a lot of uh, use and versatility. Um, and it was kind of like the reason why a lot of people play Battling Boxers, just because of this one card. And I'm glad it was only a rare, make it, made it very, made the deck very accessible because the deck was kind of mediocre. And um, yeah, so it, it was just nice just to play the deck, you know, at, at a casual level. So next we have um, one of my kind of, I would say, uh, Mascots, uh, Heroic Champion Excalibur. I don't think I've put him into a deck profile before, but uh, if this is the first, then you know, so be it. So two level four warriors, detach two, he becomes 4,000 for the next two turns. Um, it's that's, that's really all he does. Just 4,000 hitter, no cost, well, the cost of detaching, but no real cost other than that. He just requires two level four warriors, you know. So since his deck is entirely warriors, you know, Excalibur. So one Castell slowly grew into my favorite Exceed, as I said before. And Diamond Direwolf, which you should replace with Tornado Dragon. Because Tornado Dragon is light years better than this. And this deck has no back row removal. So definitely play Tornado, Tornado Dragon over Di uh, Diamond Direwolf. And lastly, we have Digusto Emerald, because it recycles. As you can see in the bottom here, I did play uh, Ghost Dash, um, or... Joyous Ash or whatever it's actually called. I don't really care. Uh, so somebody on Zodiac was was triggered because uh, you YouTubers weren't calling Ghost Ash by its TCG name, and you know it's like, like who cares? Honestly, like we we all know what the card is. We know what the card does. I don't care if I call it a different name. All right. Um, I tried it out in the initial deck, and I was like, eh, uh, hand traps in this deck aren't really that good. Uh, this deck loses a lot of its um, hand advantage quickly because you're popping a lot of your cards often. So having a card that requires hand advantage to be really useful um, isn't necessarily the best thing in this deck. I did have Twin Torches as well. I eventually just ended up cutting those. I never actually needed them, which is kind of funny. Like this deck just powered through um, all the decks I played. Uh, I I remember the decks I'm play I, I was playing wasn't really that relevant, so... It is a fair case to say that you might actually need these. 
Uh, supply Squad just for draw power, but uh, I, I never actually needed it. Like, I thought maybe... Like, I wanted to test it out, but I never got to, so... And lastly, a joke counter. Um, during the battle phase, when the spell trap card or monster effect is activated while you control a battling boxer, negate the activation if you do destroy it. Again, Konami crippling battling boxer support, since joke counter can only activate during the battle phase, that limits its uh, uses a lot. And the fact you have control of battling boxer makes it bad enough, so... Yeah. Sadly, I had to cut it. Uh, I ran it initially with, with two solemn strike and like one joke counter, maybe stop a quaking, maybe stop uh, storming or drowning or something. But uh, yeah. So uh, that's the deck, guys. Uh, it's more of a troll deck. Um, I just wanted to use battling boxers again. So it, it was pretty fun. But uh, I, I don't know if I made battling boxers slightly better or slightly worse by making uh, battling boxers this way. But um, if you guys like Battling Boxers, uh, tell me how you guys played it, what uh, experience you may have had with the deck. And if you made it this far, just just put a hashtag in the comments just saying uh, low tier boxer, um, I guess, <laughs> in the comments. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, or true boxer. No, no, no. Put, put, it, put hashtag true boxer in the comments if you made it this far. Um, I know this was kind of long. This is one of the longest videos I do. All these deck profiles I do are pretty long because I tend to ramble on about, like, the specific cards. And especially with that history I gave at the beginning. Like, <laughs> there's no way this is going to be a short deck profile. But um, if you guys want to see more shorter deck profiles, I can definitely try to manage that. Uh, especially in the, the in real life ones. They're a lot shorter because it's a lot more awkward, so we kind of want to get it done faster. But when I'm comfortable, I can sit down and I can... Um, talk about for hours what like the versatility of each individual card it's bound to be longer and i apologize if you don't like the longer ones but i do tend to leave a deck list in the description because not everybody watches it to the end so you know again hashtag true boxer if you uh made it this far in the comments so um this was nisha here nice talking to you guys peace